Um, and that's been very incredible. And she's kind of held my hand through that hell. Um, and we're having a baby together. Thanks. Thanks. Congratulations to both. It of was. You. I was nervous when I was about to say the news. <laughs> That's why I looked down and then I looked up. Yeah, no, yeah. like it wasn't that you like forgot it or anything. You no, were... no, no. It's, uh, really, yeah. it's really thrilling. I'm gonna be a dad. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. I'm really, really, we're both really, really happy. Uh -huh. Hey, it's your Uncle Herman here and I'm still an alpha male. Recently there's been a growing phenomenon that's caught my attention. The phenomenon is called the parasocial relationship, a relationship that exists between public figures and their fans, and this has been brought to the centre of social media discourse in light of recent news relating to none other than comedian John Mulaney. John Mulaney started his career as a comedian in the late 2000s, where he was not only becoming a prominent stand-up but also worked as a writer on SNL. He created iconic characters such as Stefan with Bill Hader. Hi. Hi, Sean. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? <laughs> and even though he's been a successful stand-up for over a decade, it wasn't until more recent years following the release of his 2015 special, Comeback Kid, that he'd start to gain even more popularity, especially amongst young millennials in Generation Z, or Z. John Mulaney quickly rose to mainstream fame, becoming one of the most quotable and memeable comedians on social media for his PG-13 humour that mainly focused on his childhood, growing up Catholic, his parents and his wife. A lot of John Mulaney's internet fans, especially on Tumblr, had cultivated a culture of appreciation for his wife-loving humour, perhaps because it was refreshing to see a straight guy who didn't just get up on stage and talk about how much he hates being married. Also, I wouldn't say that. What kind of show would that even be? Hello! My wife is a bitch! And I don't like her! That's like a support group for men in crisis with keynote speakers John Voigt and Alec Baldwin. And so, in light of his recent public divorce, we've seen firsthand how his young fans seem to have developed a parasocial relationship with the comedian, and how that has developed into them feeling betrayed by a divorce that people everywhere suddenly felt involved in. So what is a parasocial relationship? A parasocial relationship is defined as the relationship created between a celebrity or influencer and their fans. In essence, it's the subconscious bond that we create with famous people that we like, that makes us think that we know them and have a personal connection to them, when in reality we don't. It's an almost entirely one-sided relationship, but our brains trick us into thinking that something there is real, and we develop a genuine care, admiration, or even romantic feelings for this person that we've never met. One article that I'll link below recites that it's possible to perceive that a relationship is close and intimate when, in reality, you don't really know that person. You only know what they decide to show on social media. In addition, experts confirm that it's a non-reciprocal relationship, so this is nothing but a pseudo-bond. The official YouTube account even accidentally tweeted about this phenomenon on social media when they tweeted, Create as a proof that people can feel like family even if you've never met them. This tweet caused uproar as it seemed to glorify this one-sided relationship. It was deleted shortly afterwards, but that didn't stop it from causing Twitter discourse. One user said, I want to say this is gentle as possible, but as someone who's dealt a lot with people projecting parasocial feelings and relationships onto me even before I became a YouTuber, oh dear god please do not view me as family. Another said, it's perfectly fine if you enjoy my content, that's the reason why I make it, but please do not think of me as a friend or family, it makes me uncomfortable and I don't encourage forming parasocial relationships with any creator. So it sounds bad, probably because it is bad in some cases, often because our brains will form these relationships without our knowledge, but it's also precisely what celebrities and PR teams thrive off of. They love to use this relationship to present a close bond with fans and make the celebrity in question more personable. Take Taylor Swift for example. Taylor Swift is a master of making her parasocially attached fans feel special, and I must note that I'm not saying that Taylor Swift is a bad person for doing this. 
For years, Taylor's been known for interacting with her mega fans on Twitter and in the depths of Tumblr, sending them money, care packages, turning up at their houses, inviting them to secret album listening parties at her house, the list goes on. She's carefully cultivated a persona that appears to have an incredibly close and personal bond with fans, and in turn, Taylor Swift fans' parasocial bond only gets stronger. They feel like they know her intimately and that they can trust her. The reality is that no matter how many times you've met Taylor Swift or been in her secret circle of fans, the relationship is still transactional. She is selling you her music and an image of herself and her fans are buying it. It's not either person's fault, it's simply how our brains have adapted to the culture of celebrity. Ultimately, it is harmless as long as the fans are having a positive experience. But when it becomes a dependent relationship where fans' emotions can be deeply affected by the actions of a celebrity who they don't know, there's an interesting dynamic there that can be harmful to both sides of the relationship, which is what in part we've seen with John Mulaney fans suddenly feeling betrayed by him for his own personal decisions. The parasocial relationship is an interesting one to analyse when it comes to stand-up comedians, especially those with a younger fan base who might be more prone to developing this kind of parasocial bond. Stand-up comedians' aims are often to make you feel like you relate to them. They share personal details of their lives, often in a way that makes you feel like you're a friend having a conversation with them. And this can fool the mind into thinking that you know them in a very personal way and as a friend. One article in reference to John Mulaney wrote, We share an affinity for the guy who seemed to embody dorkiness, the observational funny guy who radiates a kind of wholesomeness even as he talked about his problems. Few white men in American comedy inspire as much love as he does, perhaps because in a sea of faux provocations and wannabe contrarians, Mulaney felt refreshingly simple. Every comedian, even the most scathingly self-loathing ones, puts on a persona that makes it easier to convey cold hard truth. Mulaney's was comforting and palatable, devoid of guile or acid. That's not to say that he was milk toast or incapable of darker moments. Rather, his aim seemed fair and accurate, something that feels dishearteningly rare in the era of men screaming about cancel culture because they can't be openly transphobic anymore. For a lot of fans, John Mulaney was that one good guy. It goes on to say that, of course, being the one good guy is a surefire way to become a villain. Mulaney hasn't been rejected en masse, but there's a curious sense of betrayal from his fans over the split from Tendler and Munn rumours. Also, all of the articles that I'm quoting and that I used to research this video are really well written and insightful and if you have time and want to do further reading I'd highly recommend having a look at some of the links that I'll put in the description. So John Mulaney first started trending this year when it was publicly announced that he'd gone into rehab. Now this information was leaked to the press and there were fans who argued it wasn't fair for this to not only be out there against his will, especially whilst he was away in rehab, but also for him to be a trending topic on Twitter because of it. But amongst the fans expressing concerns, there were people crying out on social media about how he'd betrayed their perception of him as the good guy. They probably didn't realise that this perception of him was based on a couple of hours of carefully crafted Netflix specials that don't necessarily reflect who he is as a person or stage. But still, though he's talked about substance abuse in the past, people seem to think that this was way back in the past and that he'd overcome it from ways that he talked about in his stand-up specials. Therefore, to find out that behind the scenes he wasn't the person that they thought he was took a hit to the parasocial relationship developed by a few of his dedicated fans. One Vox journalist seemed to side with these fans' feelings, calling John Mulaney's news a dirty twist, comparing him to Louis C.K. The article wrote, This latest instance of a stand-up comedian pretending to be a normal guy but then turning out to have the same cliched problems as so many other white men in Hollywood feels like a dirty twist. It wasn't the narrative we were promised. See also Louis C.K., another branded liberal comedian whose fans felt betrayed by his persona when he admitted to sexual misconduct. So now, along with Mulaney, we'll have to rebuild a new collective image of what John Mulaney the comedian represents. Mulaney, at least, is self-aware about what a challenge that presents. They're all uncomfortable to be, he told Seth Meyers, when Meyers asked him if post-rehab Mulaney was the hardest version of John Mulaney to be. He described the experience as like standing on Bambi legs, a predictably cute Mulaney-ish way of describing a complicated new situation. However, if the public allows Mulaney to reinvent himself, to have a significant say in the next iteration of his collectively constructed public persona, it probably won't be as winsome newborn babe in the woods. It will likely instead be a much different, darker and perhaps even humbler version of the impossibly perfect symbol we thought we knew. Now this sparked a bit of controversy as it seems like this journalist is projecting a lot of their own opinions and arguing that John Mulaney somehow owed them something and promised them the kind of man he was. 
Seth Simmons highlighted this paragraph on Twitter, writing, What the goddamn hell are you talking about? Prompting another Twitter user to quote it, saying, This woman is really comparing John Mulaney to a man who's assaulted woman because he started a happy new relationship after his divorce and rehab. That seems like a healthy and sane response. The article wasn't all bad, but the point that they ended on in that paragraph seemed a little off. To say that he was pretending to be a normal guy all along and comparing him to Louis C.K. is a tough sell considering all he's done is open up about going into rehab and ended his marriage, which wildly contrasts the things that Louis C.K. was accused of. Also, to pick at the metaphor that John Mulaney used in an interview as being too cute and Mulaney-ish, it's like they think that beneath his comic persona is some dark evil being that's never had any sort of light thought that remotely resembles the things that John Mulaney is known to say on stage, even though the things he says on stage are things that he writes himself. It appears as if people are no longer willing to trust John Mulaney's word anymore because he once talked about how much he loved someone that he's no longer with. Earlier in this article they wrote that the problem is that Mulaney himself cultivated this idealism and used it to promote his brand. He was a likeable, happily married everyman and that made him approachable and unlike the average Hollywood celebrity. He performed this role so well in fact that it didn't feel to the audience like a performance, and so they forgot that it was, and had been all along. Ugh, wrote one commenter in response to Ward's essay. Shame on me for thinking that his onstage persona was really him. I think that comedians are an extended and exaggerated version of themselves on stage, and though it is a carefully cultivated persona, that doesn't mean that they're not allowed to be human off stage. This article is written in a way that makes it seem as if John has massively betrayed everyone by going into rehab, which is usually a really positive step for any drug user, and ending his marriage. A marriage that nobody but the two people involved truly know about in depth enough to give an opinion. It's argued that people felt betrayed because of how much John Mulaney had previously talked about his loving relationship with his now ex-wife. He also talked about their desire not to have children, and so for him to get with a new woman that is now pregnant with his child seems like a sudden change of character. I didn't mean to make it sound like we don't want children. We don't, but I didn't mean to make it sound like that. Sometimes babies will point at me, and I don't care for that shit at all. <laughs> A journalist in Bustle interviewed a psychologist on the uproar surrounding John Mulaney in particular, writing that they had a vision of who he was and how they related to him. It worked for them and he turned out to be a real person. John Mulaney is just trying to live his life and be who he is, but the things that he's done don't fit with this appealing persona that he had prior. Because Mulaney was so outspoken about his own recovery, his ability to change and his tender feelings for his artsy wife, fans felt like they really knew him. They related to him and aspired to be like him and in doing so painted him as the perfect partner. Obviously we know nothing about his life or his marriage or any of those things, but it now seems like he's making these decisions that go against who he is. But who he is is an image of who he is, as opposed to who he really is. Dr. Leeson continues that because John Mulaney was seen as reformed, fans grew comfort in thinking his unfavourable or unflattering behaviour was in the past. It's like, I want you to be flawed in a way you were before, when you had recovered and it was an admirable story. I don't want you to be flawed for real, she says. The case of John Mulaney's relationship is an interesting one, and one where the parasocial relationship has come into play the most recently, in light of his announcement that he's in a new relationship with Olivia Munn and that she is pregnant with his child. One of the first tweets that I saw about the situation was one that accused Olivia Munn of trying to break up John Mulaney's marriage to Anna Marie Tendler in 2015 by referencing Olivia's memoir. They posted a screenshot of a post that reads, In 2015, Munn admitted that she and Mulaney met at a wedding and immediately hit it off. I was like, oh my gosh, do you and your fiancé want to go and have dinner or something and hang out? At first it was cool and then I kept going up to him at the wedding like, so you having fun? I was just so obsessed with hanging out with and talking to him, she said at the time. Mun later admitted that she emailed the stand-up star afterwards but he never responded, forcing her to convince herself that she might have got the wrong email. The tweet read, as if Olivia Munn's memoir isn't gross enough, she was trying to break up John Mulaney's relationship way back in 2015. For me, this seems like a reach. It seems like, at this time, Olivia Munn was just trying to be friends with John Mulaney. She even asked him to come to dinner with his fiance. Whether Olivia Munn had this malicious plan to try and break up John Mulaney's relationship is not what I'm interested in. I'm more fascinated by the way that fans of John Mulaney in this situation have started to villainize Olivia Munn, suddenly making harsh accusations that she is to blame for John Mulaney's divorce and not the people involved in the marriage in the first place who decided to get a divorce. I think that this is another case of the attachment of a parasocial relationship. I don't want to assume 
assume anything about the person tweeting this, but it would seem as if they have a subconscious attachment to John Mulaney that can't accept that he might have been the instigator of his own divorce. It doesn't seem fair to me to imply that Olivia Munn is a homewrecker based purely on assumptions without knowing anything about the situation. The replies to this tweet call Olivia Munn things like woman-hating, irrelevant, desperate and gross, which to me looks like a lot of internalised misogyny being taken out on this woman that people think that they know. It seems cruel to try and blame someone instead of accepting that marriages end and people get divorced and it doesn't mean that the marriage was never happy or that something awful had to happen. It could be those things but it also could be that two people just grew apart. And again this isn't anybody's conscious fault, it seems to be a lot of projecting but that doesn't stop it from adding fuel to the social media fire. There's even a TikTok hashtag called Team Anna, Anna being the name of John Mulaney's ex-wife, where people do in-depth analyses of her Instagram account and try to decipher what these cryptic messages mean about her relationship with John Mulaney. I'm sure that Anna is a lovely person, but picking sides in a marriage breakdown when all you know is the people's public persona is dangerous. Yeah, no, homeboy definitely cheated and she is making it very obvious. Look at her necklace. Look at Miss Anne Boleyn. Coincidence? No. Okay, literally this, ever since Anna's Mother's Day post, where she implied that her path to motherhood was chosen for her, and then her husband got another woman pregnant. Okay, first of all, that is so nice. Second of all, Anna Marie, John Mulaney's ex-wife, has her moon in Pisces, just like Olivia Munn. John Mulaney is definitely trying to subconsciously balance something out because he has Virgo placements. Just a constant rhythm of disharmony in his life, and he's trying to compensate that with women. It's interesting, though, because uh, John Mulaney and Anna Marie got married when Anna Marie was going through her Saturn return in Scorpio in 2014, and now she's getting her first Saturn square after her Saturn return. Saturn is currently transiting Aquarius, squaring her Saturn and Scorpio. The second Saturn square is what Lada Dunchev calls painful severance, meaning that the previous work that you've done is kind of severing off and you have to realize that even your body isn't attached to this material world or your soul isn't attached to the material items around you. She is going through such a spiritual transformation right now. It's insane. And I see amazing things happening for her. Maybe not so publicized, but definitely a lot of internal validation. So good for her. I see it. One tweet about the situation read, there's a subgenre of tweets in this world that you simply know with that secret sixth sense are about John Mulaney. The tweet being, any male celebrity who's not openly misogynistic or otherwise horrible attracts a really weird parasocial fan base that ultimately turns on him when they realise that people are not fictional characters. Another reads, people on this app have this degree of a parasocial relationship with John Mulaney scare me. He gaslit his wife, how? Did he tell you or did you watch his one hour specials and thought you knew everything about him? The tweet reads, cause she's obviously pregnant and he divorced like yesterday after gaslighting his wife about everything going on. Also, while married, he was very outspoken about not wanting children of his own. This tweet shows the two sides of the spectrum. The camp that jumped onto social media to turn on John Mulaney and the camp that jumped on to defend him. It seems that Mulaney fans either blamed Olivia Munn and remained seeing John Mulaney as the version of himself that they knew and loved or they suddenly turned on John Mulaney, feeling betrayed by him after talking about how much he loved his wife in his stand-up sets and decided to project this anger on Twitter. I think that this points to a larger point about how people can not only create parasocial relationships with individuals but also with couples. It's easy to see a couple in the media and think that they are perfect and relationship goals and in a constantly blissful soulmate relationship, refusing to accept the reality that the perfect relationship doesn't really exist. And even if we know that deep down, it's so easy to attach our subconscious onto images we see of what relationships should be like, without knowing the hard work that goes into building a relationship behind the scenes. In John Mulaney's case, he spoke occasionally in his sets about his wife, usually in a very positive way that criticised other comedians who talked negatively about theirs. One of his most quoted memes was the classic, that's my wife. And so for this relationship to break down, it seems as if people who were invested in the relationship suddenly felt as if they were involved in the people's lives. It seems that loving your wife in your Netflix special cannot coexist with a separation at a later date. In a time of heightened emotions like these, I can't imagine how hard it must be to read the kind of things that people have been writing on social media about the people involved in this situation. One tweet reads, John Mulaney's whole shtick was loving his now ex-wife and how they never wanted kids, so him probably cheating and like immediately having a child with the woman he divorced his wife for is yikes, trash behaviour. Another reads, reminder, John Mulaney divorced his wife for no good apparent reason, claiming the stress of his rehab was too much for the relationship and that he couldn't do it, and then instantly starts dating Olivia Munn. 
John Mulaney. It's been said so many times before, but it's way too easy to see celebrities and people in the public eye as something beyond what we experience as humans. They are seen as something unreachable, as something beyond us, and it's hard to imagine them as regular human beings who make mistakes and have just as many trials and problems as us. If he did cheat, of course that's bad, but none of these people know anything about the relationship. It's all projections based off of what people think they know about a celebrity and has become such a key example of a parasocial bond gone bad. Whatever your opinion of John Mulaney is, I think that it's important to remember that none of us actually know him. No matter how many interviews or Netflix specials you watch of someone, it's still only a very small curated part of their life. And though our subconscious can trick us into thinking we have a personal involvement in these people's lives, we know nothing about them on a personal level, and spewing opinions about celebrities on Twitter helps nobody. But of course that will not stop Twitter being a cesspool for people spewing their opinions about people in the public eye, as that is Twitter's USP. Twitter ultimately thrives on parasocial relationship. But I do want to end on a positive note because John Mulaney's case is a unique one, but parasocial relationships are not always bad. A HuffPost article that was recently written about the situation takes a more positive spin on the phenomenon, saying that we have a primitive mechanism that propels us to form close bonds with people. At our current evolved stage, that mechanism doesn't differentiate between real relationships and those that we learn about through movies, television shows, or the internet, such as influencers, YouTubers, or podcasters you'd honestly miss if they went offline. In fact, by by and large, parasocial relationships are almost entirely beneficial. Studies have shown that these one-sided bonds can help put people at ease, especially in the case of young people figuring out their identities and those with low self-esteem. People with low self-esteem might use their parasocial relationships to see themselves more positively, much like people with high self-esteem do with their real social relationships. A parasocial relationship is safe, Derek said. Your favourite celebrity cannot reach out of a magazine article to reject you. This has changed somewhat as social media has developed, but it's still rare. Projection is involved here too, when we're deeply invested in our celebrity or athlete, who they were before fame, their career highs and lows, even their romantic lives, we often project ourselves onto them. They become aspirational figures, surrogates for our hopes, dreams and expectations of our own lives. In essence, we've all likely experienced parasocial relationships of some kind, and they can be part of a healthy mind. It's completely normal to develop these kinds of relationships, but then when a celebrity subverts what you expect of them, we have to learn and recognise not to take it personally. A quote that I think sums this up really nicely is from an interviewee on the HuffPost who gave a statement about John Mulaney saying, Hannah, a 22 year old from Pennsylvania, says she felt guilty about being sad about John Mulaney's divorce. His personal life and relationships aren't really any of her business, and outside of the dramatised glimpses he gives in his stand-up, she has no idea what's going on behind closed doors. I don't know what's going on in his life, I have no clue what he's going through, Hannah said, but at least for me, his projects got me through a really tough time in my life and I felt a bond to his work. I think what we're learning is that we have to accept that celebrities are human beings and they're trying to find their way through life the same way we are in a much more public way. I think that this highlights perfectly how Hannah's bond to John Mulaney in this case was helpful and meant a lot to her, but instead of feeling like he suddenly betrayed her, she had to learn to accept that her bond extended no further than what she knew of him from his stand-up. And I think that's a positive outlook. Nobody is denying that these bonds aren't real, or that it can be hard to accept a sudden subversion of what you expected from someone, but we also have to recognise that we don't know what happens in celebrities' offline lives, and we can still foster a healthy bond with their work without feeling deeply affected by their personal personal choices. So thank you so much for watching this video. I have, as always, been your Uncle Herman. You can like, subscribe, watch some of my other videos, and I will be back very soon with my next one.